So in this video, what we've got is a coordinate or a pair of coordinates, 3, 6, and we have some transformations that I'm going to apply to it. And really what I want to know is where is this point going to move to? What are going to be the new coordinates after each of these transformations? Always going back and starting with the original ones there. Okay. So um, it might be that this would go on to become here is a shape, uh, redraw it, resketch the shape after the transformation. And you need to look at the particular coordinates of the curve to do that. So we're just going to work with one in this video just to see what happens. So we should now be able to identify what each of these transformations are. This first one, for example, is a translation by the vector 3, 7. So that will move the point 3 to the right, OK, and then 7 up. OK, and so this new point will be 6, 13. OK, and that would be the new coordinate for number 1. Now for number 2, we've got f of 2x. Now that is a stretch by factor a half in the x direction. So whenever a stretch is applied, it always comes, well, in the x direction, it always comes out from the y-axis, OK? So anything that is going to be stretched will move according to where they are on the y-axis. So if you had a point that was on the y-axis, for example, then if you applied a stretch in the x direction, it wouldn't move, OK? It would stay fixed. This point, however, is not on the y-axis. So if this is a stretch factor a half parallel to the x-axis, that's going to stretch it inwards. OK, and so our new point would appear here. So that would be 3 halves 6. The y-coordinate would stay where it is, but the x-coordinate would have shifted and be halved. So that's 3 halves 6. Now, for number 3, we've got four lots of f of x. So that's a stretch parallel to the y-axis this time, factor 4. And so this point will be stretched from the x-axis this time, OK, all the way up. So it's now four times as high. So there's 3, 6. There's 3, 12. There's 3, 18, for example. And there's 3, 24, somewhere up here. OK, so this would just apply to the y coordinate, or ordinate, it would be 324. Now, f of a third x, this is a stretch parallel to the x-axis this time, factor 3, because it's 1 over, that's the reciprocal of the coefficient of x that's there. So this is factor 3 in the x direction. So this would be up to 9, 6. So we'd have 6, 6. And then we would have 9, 6. So that the x-coordinate is three times as far from the y-axis as it was originally. So that would be 9, 6. One third f of x. Well, that is a stretch parallel to the y-axis, factor one-third, OK? Because outside, it maintains as it is, as the factor. So we want to be a third as far away from the x-axis as we are, actually are here. So that would be down to 3, 2. The y-coordinate gets third, a third of it. I don't want to invent the word thirded. OK, but that's effectively what's happened. The x-coordinate maintains the same. The y-coordinate is a third of what it originally was. So that would be 3, 2. Now we've got number 6. Now, because we've got the minus sign involved, it's definitely going to be a reflection. 
okay? The x-coordinate inside is changing sign. So if the x-coordinate is changing sign, then 3, 6 will become minus 3, 6. So that is a reflection in the y-axis. And if we have a minus sign outside of the f of x, that means it's the y coordinate that is changing sign, and so that is a reflection in the x-axis. So 3 minus 6. And that is how we can apply these transformations uh, to a singular point. Okay. So if you had a series of points um, in order and you were applying a transformation to them, this is what would have to happen to each of them. Okay, you will have one transformation and you're going to apply it to a whole series of points to make the new graph. So it might be a graph that looks something like this. For example, where you're given distinct points and you need to transform all of them by a single transformation. Okay, and this is how you would do just one of those coordinates.